What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So we're gonna check out ten worst WWE Saudi Arabia matches, man. Since we just finished off checking out one of, if not the best Saudi Arabia show for Crown Jewel we have ever had so far, we gotta check this one out. The top ten worst matches from that uh, that um, um, pay per view series so far, man. Uh, this is from Parts Fun Known. I think I pronounced it. I think I said it correctly this time. I always mess this name up. Um, but I, I know you guys have been wanting me to check out his uh, how he would have booked it WWE series. So um, if you if there's a particular one from the series, I know he did one for uh, how he would have booked the Fiend. I know I think he did one for CM Punk. Uh, th I think he's done some for other uh, other storylines and wrestlers as well. So if you want me to check out that series from him, let me know down below which one you want me to check out. And also run up the like button, uh, smash the like button on this video. That'll also let me know that you guys are interested and wanting me to check out some more of Parts Fun Known. So we're gonna do this, man. I know there's gonna be some some awful matches on this uh on this uh uh this list here this compilation here so let's check this out appreciate all of sport we're almost at 60k y'all uh we're almost there man so let's get right into it oh bollocks so in case you missed it i biggest air quotes in the world won the opportunity to compete against ollie for pete's jam that championship at the next major wwe show unfortunately that major show is crown bloody jewel bloody being an expletive and a descriptor crown jewel yeah. is wwe's first saudi show since the pandemic and god how i secretly hoped that the pandemic had somehow made wwe's contract with the saudi regime evaporate but no 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 here we go again these shows for a number of different reasons suck first yeah. because they're corporate death reference to a regime that murders journalists and doesn't have a definition of human rights in their dictionary but also these shows just they suck they're glorified house shows but at least yeah. the house shows nothing's booked to happen so all the baby faces go over and people try to at least have an uncomplicated good time at these toilet brush foul smelling extravaganzas not only are they even though they are you know surrounded in controversy and some people don't like to sh check these shows out I know we did for you guys on stream and be honest with you this was the best show they've done so far since having the Saudi shows. The cards are mostly terrible, but they routinely come coupled with some flabbergastingly bad booking decisions. Yes. There have been only five Saudi shows, but even then, this was a hard list to make. That's how uniformly arse these shows are. I don't want to watch Crown Jewel, but seeing as I have to, you all have to suffer with me. I'm Adam Haling from Parts Fun Known, and these are the 10 worst WWE matches to happen in Saudi Arabia. Oh, Please like and subscribe. I had to watch a bunch of Saudi Arabia matches for this. Please subscribe. Ah, Number 10, Shane McMahon versus Dolph Ziggler, Crown Jewel 2018, aka the match where a chub of baloney was crowned the best wrestler in the world. Oh, yeah. That, mm, this is when Shane McMahon was a heel. He was like, I want to say he was like the GM of SmackDown at the time. So he was a heel. I could be wrong there, but it was he was a heel, but it wasn't one of those things where it was like a good heel. Like, you love to hate the guy. You want to see the guy lose. He he was becoming one of those, okay, get off my TV type heel because he was kind of overshadowing the talent. And it, 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 he was inserting himself in things he... I did, it didn't make sense, you know. It, it was kind of, it was kind of getting boring. It was getting annoying in a sense. So when they did this whole tournament, it it, it really to have Shane win it just was like, yo, he's not even really a wrestler like that. You have him win a tournament saying he's the best in the world. Super cringe. And like all true dads, he did it in his jeans. The entire tournament yep. was a bit topsy turvy because, lest we forget, a tournament to crown, and it bears repeating, the best wrestler in, in the, the world, world had wrestlers featuring Seth Rollins, Rey Mysterio, Kurt Angle, and Randy Orton. That came down to Dolph Ziggler versus The Miz, which is like a best film ever tournament coming down to Mission Impossible 2 versus Ice Age. Fine, but come on. Miz suffered a bad case of kayfabe and had to forfeit the match, but Shane McMahon, who cares so much about your entertainment that he repeatedly charges you to watch him wrestle took off his jacket put up his famously terrible jukes and beat ziggler very quickly and so the best oh wait maybe he wasn't a heel i think maybe he was a face at this time i don't know but it was it was starting to get a little bit annoying 
I, I don't remember exactly. I do remember he had his heel run uh, at, at some point uh, as the GM. Um, but at this point, maybe he was a heel. Maybe it was a face. Either way, that was the wrong decision to have him whole win that 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 tournament that was just a waste of everyone's time best wrestler in the world was crowned amidst much rejoicing one month to the day after the death of jamal khashoggi F these shows and it gets worse from here number nine the to wait gauntlet super showdown 2020 his kid bashing his favorite toy against the floor who do you like vince asks the saudis we like the undertaker can he still wrestle um says vince looking over at taker in his hospital bed more machine now than man mm. yeah Kind of. These shows have all but eradicated the final vestiges of the dead man's precarious yeah. prestige. The worst matches are yet to come in this list, and I bet you can guess them. But let's mm -hmm. talk about the To Wait Trophy Gauntlet. A match tired day from beyond the grave. One with a single bad-looking chokeslam, despite not being in it, then pissing off back to have a lie in a hammock without even oh, taking Oh, yeah, I remember that. Like, he just came out of nowhere, and, and then he did a chokeslam to AJ Styles. I was just like, huh? What? I was so confused. I was like, bro, what the hell is this? In the trophy with him. The rest of the match that preceded Taker beating AJ Styles for no reason other than to build heat for him beating AJ Styles at WrestleMania yeah, was that's really, really bad what it was. and boring too. With R-Truth knocking off Bobby Lashley by tripping him over, beating Andrade by f***ing accident, and then Eric Rowan by DQ. What a nail biter. Thanks for lasting 20 goddamn minutes. Number eight, Brock. Yeah. Goodbye. Roman fees at wreck up over them Saudi shows, whoo, they, mm, man, nah, bro, I think this previous one was the first time I watched the entire show, I'm just be honest, I think that was the first time I actually watched the entire show in its entirety, usually I just watch the clips on YouTube. So, in the wake of Roman Reigns vacating the Universal title after revealing that his leukemia had returned, WWE advertised Lesnar versus Strowman for the title. For context, mm -hmm. Brock Lesnar had held the title for a year and a half, and fans were happy to have the title on weekly TV again. Yeah. Roman just had his momentum crushed with a botched heel turn, being screwed by Brock yep. out of his briefcase cash. Yep. And also, Strowman had already lost to Lesnar the year before, so Strowman wins in a layup, right? Oh, yeah. you don't know Saudi Arabia. It's like mm -hmm. Brock's paid by the hour in Saudi. WWE gets him in and out faster than Jim from American Pie. Corbin clocks Strowman with the belt. Lesnar F5s him. Strowman kicks out. Another F5. Another kick out. Another F5. Another kick out. Just please f***ing end this. Another F5. Another F5. And finally, it's over. The match is an yep. angle, but WWE still managed to stretch it out over three boring, anger-inducing minutes in a move yeah. that was probably designed to protect Braun, but ended up just having us watch him get his ass planted over and over again. Awful. I hate this. I, I, I hate it. Number seven, Brock Lesnar versus Kane Velasquez. Crown yep, Jewel 2019. That, that was a bad one, too. the premiere episode of SmackDown on Fox, WWE booked Brock Lesnar to beat Kofi Kingston in one move so he could have enough time to run an angle with the debuting Kane Velasquez. Oh, wow, said WWE in all caps in Comic Sans. How exciting. At Crown Jewel, Rey Mysterio brought his other gigantic son down to the ring. Big <laughs> fight feel. And that big fight was two boring cuddles, one kick, and then you're done. With Velasquez tapping out to the Kimura, not even on f***ing camera. You know yeah. what's good about wrestling being... All that build up and it was it the match did not live up to it at all. It was just what the hell are we watching? What is this, bruh? Being fake is that you can plan exciting things and then make those exciting things happen. This match was the first and only one to feature Cain Velasquez before mm -hmm. the company went on to release him six months later. Bloody hell, thanks for coming. The show was partially sold on this two minutes. Yeah, it at least was. Tyson Fury versus Braun Strowman went a little longer. It wasn't a lot better, but at least it was a thing. This was nothing. Sorry, Kofi. Number six, Shane McMahon versus Roman Reigns. Kofi got the short end of the stick on that one. Rain Super Showdown 2019. The best wrestler in the world versus the big dog. A sellout no yep. matter which arena you book it in. Crikey Moses, this match though. 10 minutes that felt like Do 20. Do not watch also, this match. Shane McMahon dominates Roman Reigns with his crappy little punches like a cat batting a piece of paper around a table. Sure, it's mostly down to McIntyre interference, but so much of this match is Shane. At this point, Shane was full heel at this time. 
Drenched in sweat, looking like Paulie from The Sopranos after he's been chased by Didn't dogs through a match. rainstorm. Pink to the point of kidney match. failure. Praying to his dad that his heart won't explode. Holding Roman Reigns in endless rest holds while the crowd dies and dies and dies. Look at him. Look at him trying to be MMA on Roman. It's like a CEO paying his fitness instructor to just let him beat him up for 10 minutes because he's in a midlife crisis. And then at the end of it, Shane McMahon wins. He beats Roman. After constantly beating The Miz for months on end, he knocks off the big pup too. God damn, it would be funny if it wasn't so head in your hands boring, which it is. It really is. And it's only the third worst match at Super Showdown 2019. Yeah. What's the second? That would be number five, Lars Sullivan versus Lucha House Party Did Super Showdown 2019. Oh. Hey, everyone and everything but especially this match, but especially Bart. Lars Sullivan debuted on the main roster in April 2019 and proceeded to have only one notable feud, a woeful series of matches against Lucia House Party, a stable made up of Kalisto, Grand Metalik, and Lince Dorado. And the tagline for that stable might as well have been you cruiserweight classic before yep. sullivan got injured in that feud benching him for over a year they had this match at super showdown 2019 and to call it the drizzling shit would be to give ibs a bad name a three-on-one handicap match wherein the baby faces cheat in order to gang up on the monster heel <laughs> ending the match in a dq just let that what? fucking sink in for a little bit what's what? the point what's the fucking point of any of that the five minutes that lead up to one of the worst finishes on a major wwe show what? would be a grim omen for the kind of wrestling that would take place a year later because the match occurs to absolute silence broken only by lhp's ill-fated attempts to get a lucha chant going it's gen it it's genuinely painful to watch as sullivan manhandles the baby faces so which is the only thing of Did interest is corey graves on commentary describing lars as something hannibal lecter dreamed up in a lab that's not who hannibal lecter is to which michael cole responded Good point. Jesus wept. Number four, Brock Lesnar versus Ricochet. Super show. That's crazy. Brock Lesnar's featured on a lot of these uh, matches, man. Go down 2020. <laughs> How can a... Pr how can a promotion waste Ricochet? How do oh, you no. screw that up? One of the most imaginative and awe-inspiring high flyers, not only of his generation, but all time. Yeah. How do you bollocks up someone that talented this bad? At Super Showdown 2020, which is probably one of the most baffling pay-per-views WWE have ever produced, WWE booked Ricochet to challenge Brock Lesnar for the WWE mm -hmm. Championship, and everyone around the world thought one thing. Ricky's not going to win this one, but it'll be super fun to see what kind of... Yeah, that's, that's really what it was. The general consensus... We know he's not going to win, but it should be an entertaining, high-flying match that, you know, saying Brock will probably sell for and should be good. Dr. Soleil Flippies, he can pull off against a base as strong as Brock Lesnar. How wrong we were. Brock Lesnar yep. doing what he does best in Saudi, which is turn up, win, and piss off immediately. Buried Ricochet. The yep. word buried is overused in wrestling journalism, often used to create undue emotion around a fairly standard loss. Not so here. This is a burial. Ricochet does not get one move of offense yep. on Lesnar and is destroyed to such an extent that he looks really bad at wrestling, greatly diminishing his future star mm -hmm. power. And that is what a burial truly is. Horrific booking. Why not just have a match? You're both there. Just have a fucking match. Maddening. And speaking of rage, number three, Goldberg versus... Goodbye, Roman fees at record. This is where my disdain for Goldberg intensifies. If this is the match I think he's talking about, it could be the match I think he's talking about. You guys know the match on what I'm about to say here. This is where my disdain for Goldberg started to really occur. And yep, there it is. The Fiend versus Goldberg. When I say at this point, I was really done with Goldberg. This is where it started for me. Me personally. It just. Come on. Now, some would say maybe it should have started with them and The Undertaker going, going head to head. They're both old guys trying to, you know, give it their best. So, I'm not going to go that far. But having someone as over as creative as the fiend to ultimately lose to you when it does not like he's a newer talent he needs wins and you have him lose to someone that's in their 50s bro the late 50s we're not talking about the edge that's pulling off some great fantastic matches we're talking about someone that can barely go 10 minutes in a the ring they're losing to you Someone that is 
somewhat still trying to remain over, has came up with one of the most craziest gimmicks wrestling has ever seen and continuously shows his creative talent in the ring and outside the ring, then this is what you do. You book him against Goldberg to lose. Okay. For Showdown 2020. I mean, what do you say about this? It hasn't been said in a thousand ways and a thousand songs, Ooh. all of which have the same lyrics, which is just grown adults sobbing into their hands, wondering why they pay their monthly subscription to the stupidest wrestling company in the world. What else can you say about a match where the unstoppable final boss you've been building for half a year, even booking that terrible Hell in a Cell finish to showcase his unstoppability, just so he yep. beefs it when confronted with the world's most redundant gimmick and gets fed his own giant clown shoes the month mm -hmm. before WrestleMania. Please, what is the point? Please, even without the worst booking decision of the year, the match is, is so bad. Spears, mandible claws, and a botched jackhammer. Yep. That's your lot. That's your main yep. event. And somehow, some way, it's not Goldberg's worst Saudi Arabia match. Exactly that would not. be number two, Goldberg versus The Undertaker that Super was... Showdown 29. I have still never seen this match. And I think that's probably why I give Goldberg and The Undertaker a pass, because my eyes didn't witness this atrocity. I just knew it was awful from everyone in the YouTube community saying this is one of the worst matches they have ever seen in their lives. And it is damn near just really tarnished both of these guys' legacy legacy because of the match was that trash. You know what I'm saying? Even in the, watching The Undertaker's documentary, he, he knew that match was trash. You feel me? Uh, this is why I give Goldberg a pass, but I couldn't give him a pass on the... Uh, the Bray Wyatt situation. Because I never watched this match. And I will never watch this match. You can never pay me enough to watch this match. 19. There are sentimental reasons keeping it off the top spot, but this really should be number one. It is one of the worst matches of all time. It's a match so bad that even WWE have included it in documentaries that they have made talking yeah. about how truly overwhelmingly awful it is. The mm -hmm. type of bad where it transcends lack of heat, lack of logic, and crosses over into the very worst place where it's simply f***ing dangerous. Yeah. Genuinely, really dangerous to book yeah. these two in this heat to have this match. And no wrestling fan in their right mind wants to see that kind of danger. Mm -hmm. Goldberg concusses himself, then nearly breaks Undertaker's Takers. neck. Mm -hmm. It is not hyperbolic to say this was a few rotations away from being the Phenom's last match and ending his career yep. in the most oh horrific way possible. Undertaker hates this match. Goldberg hates it so much he needed to eat Ziggler at SummerSlam just mm -hmm. as a form of redemption. Even WWE hates it. But me personally, there is one more match. I hate right. just that little yeah. bit more. Number one, DX versus Brothers of... Didn't watch this match. So glad I didn't see it. Shawn Michaels should have never came out of retirement. This match probably should have never happened. I'm just be honest. This shouldn't have happened. Destruction, Crown Jewel 2018. Awful. They brought Shawn Michaels out of retirement for this. Now look, I know, I know that wrestlers retire and unretire and it's not a big deal, but HBK had one of the few yeah. perfect retirements in professional yes. wrestling. Something actually inspirational. Yes. He went out after the main event of WrestleMania, yes. still reasonably physically fit with plenty of dream matches still technically possible, but no, the stipulation yes. was honored. Wrestling is just storytelling at the end of the day. At least that's the part of it I care the most about. And yes. Shawn Michaels actually managed to have a story with a beginning, middle, an end until this, this yes. grotty oh little epilogue God. paid for by bad people where he broke retirement for a terrible match. Leave the memories alone. No one came out of this looking good. Not the D older generation X who'd looked like they'd <laughs> gone to their first leather bar to support their son's band and had to hide the fact they hated it there. Not Kane who got his bloody mask knocked off at one point. <laughs> and not Taker once again frustrated in his quest to have one more classic before he hung up his hat. Like I'm not made of stone. Taker tagging in to square up to HBK is a legit nostalgic yeah. moment. But Christ, that is five minutes into a match that is half an hour long. Mm -hmm. Sean gets you still got it chance that slowly over the course of the match fade to grim silence. And if that doesn't sum up the ugly dark side of nostalgia that bleeds all over these cash grab shows, what does? See you all at Crown Jewel, everyone. Ah, and that's our list. What's your... F <laughs> yeah, that match, didn't see that one either. A lot of these I didn't see, thank goodness. Sean should have never, ever, ever came out of retirement. That's the one thing that made his retirement special. He didn't come back. And the one time he comes back, it was one of the worst matches he has ever been in. No. So, yeah. 
Hey, comment down below. Let me know what's your worst match you can remember if it's in this video or or uh, in this particular video or you just know one offhand. What is your what is your worst match from one of these Saudi Arabia shows? If I have to pick for me, the match that I actually did see was the Fiend versus Goldberg match that physically made me upset watching that shit. I was pissed, bro. I was like, bro, what the fuck WWE? I was so mad, man. I I was done. I was done. If I was doing videos back then, like I am now, I definitely would have made a rant video. You guys would have got a rant video, man. So, but uh, did I even make a rant video? I don't think I did for that. I don't think I did. But yeah, hey, that's the one of the worst matches I visibly saw and watched and regretted. So what is one of the worst matches from the Saudi Arabia shows that you can remember? Appreciate all love and support. Roll to CTK. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.